The Classic Tales of Br'er Rabbit, from stories collected by Joel Chandler Harris, illustrated by Don Daly. If you enjoy this story, please give a like and subscribe. The Classic Tales of Br'er Rabbit. Br'er Fox, Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Bear, and the Peanut Patch. Br'er Fox had the best peanut patch in the country. It was full of lush green vines bursting with plump peanuts that were just about to ripen. All the other creatures on the old plantation were mighty envious of Br'er Fox, except for Br'er Rabbit. Br'er Rabbit would have been envious too if he hadn't found a way to take advantage of the situation. Br'er Rabbit decided to wait until the peanuts were ripe and then sneak through a hole in the fence to snatch whatever peanuts he could. Sure enough, just as soon as the peanuts were ripe, Br'er Fox got up bright and early to check on his patch. Right away, he discovered that someone had been stealing peanuts right off the vine. Br'er Fox was furious at the robber for ruining all his hard work, and he was determined to catch the thief. Walking around on the outskirts of the patch, he found a hole in the fence, a hole just the right size for a crafty rabbit to slip through. Right there, Br'er Fox set a trap. He bent down the branch of an old hickory tree that stood beside the fence and tied a rope to the end of it. At the other end of the rope, he tied a loop, and he set that loop down in front of the hole in the fence and weighed it down with a rock. Then he covered it with leaves and grass. Whoever stepped into that trap would be caught in the loop and strung up in the hickory tree by the leg. Br'er Fox was pleased with himself. Now he could catch the thief. That night, when Br'er Rabbit sneaked through the hole for more peanuts, he stepped right into the trap. When he kicked away the rock, the loop flew up around his leg, dragging him up into the air between heaven and earth. He was mighty surprised to find himself swinging upside down from the hickory tree. I hope I don't fall, thought Br'er Rabbit, swinging back and forth. Then he had another thought. I hope I do fall, otherwise I might not get down. And there he hung, swinging back and forth and thinking, trying to figure out what to tell Br'er Fox to get out of this one. Just as the sun began to rise, Br'er Rabbit heard someone lumbering up the road behind him. By and by, Br'er Bear ambled up to the tree and saw Br'er Rabbit hanging there, upside down. Howdy, Br'er Rabbit, said Br'er Bear, tilting his head to look at Br'er Rabbit in the face. How are you doing this fine morning? Br'er Rabbit smiled a big smile. Very fine, Br'er Bear, very fine. No, sir, you won't catch me complaining today. Br'er Bear was puzzled, but it wasn't hard to puzzle Br'er Bear. What are you doing hanging up there in the elements, Br'er Rabbit? He asked. Well, truth be told, Br'er Bear, I'm making a dollar a minute, said Br'er Rabbit. A dollar a minute? How? Br'er Fox is paying me to keep watch over his peanut patch. Br'er Rabbit explained. Some thief has been stealing his goobers. Yes, sir, this is just about the best job I've ever had. Hanging upside down gives you a whole new perspective on the world. Br'er Rabbit paused. You wouldn't... Nah. Wouldn't what? Br'er Bear asked. Well, you wouldn't want to take over, would you? I mean, I know you've got a family to feed, and you'd make a mighty fine watch bear. And a dollar a minute is nothing to sneeze at. Br'er Bear didn't much like the idea of hanging upside down. But he liked the idea of making a dollar a minute. It wasn't long before Br'er Bear let Br'er Rabbit down, stuck his own leg through the loop, and took Br'er Rabbit's place, hanging upside down from the tree. The branch hung so low that Br'er Bear almost bumped his head on the ground as he dangled in the air. Enjoy yourself, Br'er Bear said Br'er Rabbit. Then he ran to Br'er Fox's house. Oh, Br'er Fox, Br'er Fox, wake up and I'll show you who's been stealing your peanuts, Br'er Rabbit called from outside Br'er Fox's window. 
Right away, Br'er Fox got up and ran off to the patch with Br'er Rabbit. There they saw Br'er Bear hanging upside down from the tree and grinning bigger than a hyena. Howdy, Br'er Fox, said Br'er Bear. I'm glad I could be out. Br'er Bear didn't finish. Br'er Fox had thwacked him in the behind. What'd you do that for? I'm only help- Ouch! Br'er Bear stopped again as Br'er Fox swung his tick once more. It went on like this for about half an hour. Every time Br'er Bear tried to explain, Br'er Fox thwacked him again. And every time Br'er Fox thwacked him, Br'er Bear tried even harder to explain. While this was going on, Br'er Rabbit slipped away and hid in a nearby pond. He knew that once the thwacking was over, Br'er Bear would be coming after him. So he stayed in the pond until he heard Br'er Bear furiously lumbering up the road. Only Br'er Rabbit's eyes poked out above the mud. Br'er Bear thought he was a bullfrog. Howdy, Br'er Bullfrog, grumbled Br'er Bear. You seen Br'er Rabbit go by? He just went by, chigarum, said Br'er Rabbit. He went that way, chigarum pointing his eyes to the east. Mighty obliged, Br'er Bullfrog, said Br'er Bear, and off he lumbered. Br'er Rabbit stayed in the pond until Br'er Bear was well out of sight. Then he headed off the other way for home, laughing all the way. Br'er Rabbit goes fishing for suckers. Everyone on the old plantation felt sorry for Br'er Fox. He had worked so hard all spring on his peanut patch, clearing and planting and sowing, only to have his harvest stolen. So all the creatures gathered together to help Br'er Fox plant a new patch of peanuts. Br'er Bear, Br'er Raccoon, and even Br'er Rabbit showed up to help Br'er Fox replant. Br'er Rabbit was feeling guilty because he was the one who had stolen all the peanuts, so he helped too. They got busy clearing the peanut patch, pulling up the old vines, and making rows to plant new ones. Now, the weather was mighty hot, and soon Br'er Rabbit, who wasn't much of a worker in the first place, got tired. Br'er Rabbit didn't want the others to know that he was tired. He knew full well that he was a lazy creature, but he hated for others to know. So he needed a plan. Is anyone hot? asked Br'er Rabbit wiping the sweat from his nose. I sure am, said Br'er Bear. Me too, said Br'er Fox. Me three, added Br'er Raccoon. Well then, I suppose I go get us some water, said Br'er Rabbit, running off into the nearby woods before anyone could say otherwise. The woods were nice and shady and Br'er Rabbit felt much better being out of the heat. As he looked about, he saw an old stone well with two buckets hanging from the top. Br'er Rabbit was supposed to be fetching water, but that wasn't his first thought. His first thought was how nice and cool it would be to take a little bath. So into one of the buckets he hopped, and down he went. At first, the water was nice and cool, but then it got really cool. And soon after that, it turned quite cold. Br'er Rabbit began to shiver and decided it was time to go up. There was only one problem. He had no way to raise himself to the top. He had left the other bucket on the ground at the top of the well. Br'er Rabbit started to get scared. There he was, alone and cold, in the bottom of a well, far away from everyone else. As a matter of fact, he wasn't that far from everyone. Br'er Fox never let Br'er Rabbit go too far out of sight. He knew that Br'er Rabbit was always plotting something, so he had followed Br'er Rabbit. From behind a nearby tree, Br'er Fox had seen Br'er Rabbit hop into the bucket. Now why is he going down there? Br'er Fox thought to himself. There's nothing down there but cold water. And Br'er Rabbit's much too smart to get himself stuck down there for no good reason. He must be keeping something in the old well. 
something he doesn't want us to see. Br'er Fox thought he had it all figured out. The old well must be where Br'er Rabbit kept his treasures. What treasures Br'er Fox didn't know. But he decided right then and there to make a deal with Br'er Rabbit. Br'er Rabbit! His voice echoed down the well to the shivering rabbit. What are you doing down there? Br'er Rabbit knew that Br'er Fox was his only chance to get out. He thought quickly and answered, I'm fishing for suckers. Are there many of them down there? Asked Br'er Fox. Scores and scores, said Br'er Rabbit. Come on down and see. Br'er Fox knew that there wasn't any suckers down there. But he did want to see Br'er Rabbit's treasure. So he hopped into the second bucket and down he went. As he rode down, Br'er Rabbit started riding up in the other bucket. Halfway down, going pretty fast, Br'er Fox passed Br'er Rabbit, who was singing this song. Goodbye, Br'er Fox, take care of your clothes, for this is the way the world goes. Some go up and some go down, but you'll get to the bottom safe and sound. Br'er Fox just waved goodbye in confusion. When he reached the bottom, he began looking around for the treasure. Sometime later, Br'er Rabbit sent the others to help him out. And ever since then, whenever Br'er Rabbit wanted a good laugh, he'd ask Br'er Fox if he'd like to go fishing for suckers. If you enjoy the story, be sure to give a like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.